I don't think CSR and sustainability are pretty much the same things have failed. <laughs> Michael, you've recently released a book called CSR and Sustainability. In your opinion, obviously not your book, but has the CSR and Sustainability, has it failed? Uh, it's a good question after I've written, it's my third book actually on this topic, and this one is 500 pages and the course I gave here at the University of, of Geneva. Uh, I don't think CSR and Sustainability are pretty much the same things have failed um, in the 20 years since I've been working on uh, this issue. Uh, when I started, few companies were involved in applying what is meant by CSR and sustainability. Today, they, um, just about every big company in the world, um, certainly in the Fortune 500, uh, everybody is working a little bit on CSR and a little bit on sustainability. But what happened, and it came here uh, after uh, last time I gave an interview here, which was on the night before Brexit. And I, I was, and I'll say it straight right away, that I was uh, very anti-Brexit. I couldn't believe that my country, men, I'm English or uh, British, would be so, so stupid as to vote for, for such an unknown thing. And my understanding um, has grown since then of, of the reasons behind it. And I was angry. And actually I wasn't angry with my countrymen, I was actually angry with myself. Because I'd been working on CSR and sustainability for, for 20 years. And I hadn't really discussed these big underlying things that were, were going on. Uh, Brexit is one of them, but if we look around the world, we see the mess that's going on in the elections in, in the United States. We see the mess in the Middle East. We see the big problem with, with uh, immigration and so on. And uh, the, the penny dropped and I, I thought, well, has CSR and sustainability, which I defined as a multi-stakeholder approach to looking at issues, which includes societies, governments, uh, and so on, uh, has, ha have I missed the boat really? And have companies also missed the boat? Maybe they wanted to. So that's a question that I'm, I'm toying in with now and what I guess we're going to talk about today. Can CSR, can it be expanded to cover the big issues of today? That's a very, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, yes, I think, it, I think it can. But then will companies follow what we set out in CSR and sustainability? And then one might ask, well, why should they? Why should they follow that fellow Hopkins or any of the other in fact, more brilliant people who've been working on this, this topic th than I. Um, for a company, of course, its key focus, as it should be, is its bottom line, making profits. I would add to that uh, equation, you're not going to keep on making profits and have a good bottom line if the world collapses around you. So therefore, you've got to start thinking about these issues. And to a certain extent, we do see some companies working on issues such as human rights, for example, which 10 years ago, we wouldn't have thought about that. They start to worry about these issues. Uh, we see companies actually working together on disaster relief, for example. But we haven't yet seen companies do very much on refugees or on immigration or on unemployment. They might talk about it, but they haven't done very much. Now, CSR and sustainability, since it's a multi-stakeholder, it's a systems approach to looking at a company and how it's involved in society. Yes, I think there are many more things in there which have not been used by companies. So what I want to do now is to show how essential this is. And we start today with this wonderful interview with you. And you were kind of talking about it before, you know, you've got Brexit, which is the vote has happened, you've got Trump, you've got 
issues with immigration, refugees, and there's kind of a, a feeling of hopelessness. How could CSR sort of co cover these? Do you think that CSR could include all of these issues? I think it could, but I also would say I think it should. Uh, take, let, let's take one of those many issues, we can't go into them all, Brexit, for instance. Uh, the forces of capital, uh, which is what companies are generally, uh, dictate a lot of what we do. Now, the force of cap capital are based in England, in London, and it drives the UK economy. Uh, something like $65 billion of taxes go from the City of London into the Exchequer of the UK. And um, about half of that is spread around the whole country. So the forces of capital based in, in London are very worried that they won't have access as they had before to the market. Well, of course, they'll adapt and not all of them will, will worry too much. But many countries um, have supported their institutions being in London because of the ease of access to the markets on the continent in the, in the EU. And that is, that's going to be hurt with Brexit. The forces of capital don't like being hurt. And I think there will be more and more money going into Brexit, Brexit. Now, is that socially responsible? I think it is, because I think uh, the EU is a socially responsible organism. Now, we don't like it all, and there are a lot of problems with it that I know. But don't forget, it was set up, actually, so we didn't go back to having a second world war. Uh, but I think that, that companies um, and banks and financial institutions will influence uh, the policies in the UK. Well, Michael, as always, it's such a pleasure to have you here in our studio. Thanks very much. Nice to be here as always. That's all from myself and Michael today in the Geneva studio. But if you like this interview, there's plenty more on our website, dukascopy.tv.